Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the show. I'm glad to be back too, frankly. It's been a month or so since the last video. As you can see, we finished moving into the new house. Got all my stuff here back on the shelves. The last two videos were looking a little bit bare, frankly. And I finally got some free time to get in front of the camera. Not enough to get a haircut, of course, as you can see, but you know, one thing at a time. Anyway, this is good because I've got a backlog of stuff to talk about, and it's about time I actually got myself back on the horse here. So, today we're looking at a sword and sorcery comic book written and illustrated by South African artist Trevor Nguenya. It's called Shakar, the Eye of the Midnight God, which is a great title for this guy thing. This released May 24th last month and is his first published comic book, self-published, no less, under his imprint Kubo Comics. It's available on Gumroad and Global Comics. Now, I came across this guy's artwork some time ago, just randomly online, I think Twitter or something like, just, you know, randomly someone sharing some, you know, sword sorcery artwork, and immediately started paying attention because, as you can see, it is exactly tailored to my tastes in fantasy art. I mean, you know, the Frazetta is strong here. Seriously, if ever someone decides to put together an omnibus of the late uh, Charles Saunders Imaro stories, then Trevor's one of the guys you'd want illustrating it. I mean, speaking of whom uh, this style is generally referred to, the style of you know, story we're dealing with here right now, is generally referred to as sword and soul, a term that Saunders himself coined in the 80s to refer to sword and sorcery tales that take their inspiration specifically from African history, cultures, myth, while still retaining the action and adventure that we all love from sword and sorcery, you know, so that got us into the genre in the first place. Saunders himself, he set the stage with his Imaro and Dusunia story, stories, and now, guys, of course, you got guys like uh, Milton J. Davis with his Shanga series, like, uh, I got this big omnibus special edition here I got for Christmas a while back. Highly recommend it, too. And, of course, you got Trevor with his Shakar, which is continuing that tradition. Now, this comic here consists of the first two chapters of the story, which takes place early in Shakar's life. If you want to make the Conan comparison, this is his Tower of the Elephant, Rogues in the House era. You got a young guy, early to mid-twenties, far from the grizzled warrior king he'll eventually become, but already a man you definitely don't want to mess with if you value your life, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, the story we start things off with a bang, Shakar crawling out of a mass of dead bodies that are all that remains from a small trading settlement, kind of like a caravan stop, at the edge of a vast desert called Karshen, aka The End, which is a pretty fitting name considering everything that happens. We then flash back to the night before to see just how he got himself into that situation. And it sees him trying to lose himself amongst the local near-dwells, cutthroats, and, you know, traitors. Basically, you know, he's not having a very good time. He seems a very troubled young man. And there he encounters a thief who, in the middle of a, dr you know, just drunken boasting, shows off this very strange amulet that he claims to have acquired. Before, you know, Shakar is distracted, very distracted, by a dancer named Tamara who wears a veil, some shiny bangles, and very little else. It is difficult to find images of her from this comic that I can actually show in full on YouTube. Let's just put it that way. Naturally, he ends up spending some quality time, shall we say, with her. Again, on a page that I cannot show in full on YouTube. Like, here's a work-in-progress version that Trevor put out a while back. Yeah, you, you get the idea what the full version's going to look like, right? Yeah. So, yeah, good stuff. Unfortunately for them and everyone else nearby, the previous owner of that amulet, a sorcerer named Kaboro Da, has managed to track it down, and he's brought a small army of gleefully murderous possessed warriors to slaughter anyone and everyone who gets in his way. Yeah, so hijinks ensue. A, so this is really this is a tale of sex, sorcery, and a whole lot of bloodshed. All that good stuff that you want from a comic like this definitely wears its mature reader's warning with pride on the cover. I'll tell you that much. And of course, yeah, this is exactly my cup of tea. Let's face facts. Now, art-wise, the Eye of the Midnight God it looks damn good. Frankly, everything's very well drawn. And no, I'm not just no, no, I'm not just talking about that. Mine's out of the gutters, people. The line work is very clean. There's a good use of colors to create mood and, um, you know, atmosphere. I like the way, like, certain colors act as leitmotifs that are associated with particular characters. Like, 
there's this kind of, for instance, psychedelic haze kind of thing associated with the dancer Tamaka. It's actually, you know, kind of diegetic in the first uh, first appearance, coming from Brazil or something like that. But it actually becomes more and more pronounced in the background the closer she and Shakar get, and you know, especially in the moment where they really get together, of course. And in other places, there's moments where the a panel will go like full red and black, showing like both like feelings of rage and stuff like that on Shakar's part, but also that Shakar's got some serious inner demons that he's dealing with. There's a moment where he's just like sitting amongst a group of people during the festivities where you get this feeling like, you know, he's, he, something's not quite okay with him. He's got some issues he's dealing with right now from previous events that we aren't privy to in this issue of the comic. And actually, strangely enough, there's one page where those two things meet. When Shakar and the dancer are enjoying themselves, most of her, the page has her kind of psychedelia surrounding it. But there's one insert panel there with his red and black, which, yeah, yes, something's up with this guy, right? Yeah. It's a brief moment, but it does raise some questions that could be answered in future issues. And of course, there's, you know, the sorcery part of sword and sorcery. And when that turns up, it's got its own color scheme. The kind of cyan blues and, you know, pinkish magentas, very neon purples that kind of really sells the unnatural feeling of it, given how it contrasts with the more down-to-earth tones of the rest of the world as depicted. So yeah, it does kind of stand out in that regard and it works very well. Another thing I like, the how the characters are very expressive. The you know way he draws the fa their faces, you know, show their personality, a good sense of the personality and emotions from the characters, which is especially the main characters, like you know, Shakar himself, Tamara, the uh, thief, uh, the sorcerer, and the main bad guy. Which is pretty important because A, Shakar is not the talkative type at all. In fact, I actually don't think he has a single speech bubble throughout the entire story. He doesn't actually say anything <laughs> through actual dialogue. And, you know, B, most of the story is in fact told through narration rather than dialogue. You know, a little, you know, narration text and stuff like that. With a few exceptions, namely the villain of the story, Kemporo Da, and uh, the, to a lesser degree, the uh, dancer or sub, she gets a bit more dialogue. I think he probably has the highest word count of any character in the story. I mean, he's the bad guy. He's going to have a couple of monologues. Let's face facts. I think this is probably my only gripe with the Eye of the Midnight God, is that I kind of wish some of the characters did, in fact, speak more. Shakar, he can stay the stoic, silent protagonist type. That's, you know, not a problem. But I think Tamara, and especially in Gobi, the drunken thief that I mentioned earlier, who stole the titular amulet in the first place, probably would have benefited in terms of characterization by having more dialogue of their own rather than the narrator saying things for them, if that makes sense. You know, like, you know, choice of words, cadence, that kind of thing. It, you know, tends to make it a bit easier to characterize a character when you can actually hear them in their own words, right? It's not really a big deal since, as I said, the characters' expressions do a lot to sell their individual personalities, but it's something to consider, I think, for the next part of the story going forward, if and when we see some of these characters again, and of course with, you know, new characters going forward. And Shakar himself is probably going to have to, you know, at the end of this, he's definitely going to want to, if he wants to get the vengeance he's going for, yeah, he's going to have to start asking for directions, because, <laughs> you know, these swords were kind of left him in the lurch. But besides that, I don't think I really have much else to criticize, frankly. It's a solid first issue by a first-time comic book creator, and I'm looking forward to not just seeing what happens next. I mean, obviously, I want to see Shakar, you know, go on the warpath. For fuck's sake, that's exactly what you want from a character like this. But I also want to see more of this world that uh, Trevor's created, because that's the thing. We're getting just a glimpse of a tiny part of a wider sword and sorcery fantasy Africa created by a guy who actually grew up and lives in real life Africa, which lends itself to an interesting perspective on the genre, I'd say. Not to mention that, you know, given the amount of ink and you know, paint that he's dedicated to this character over the years, yeah, I mean, he's already got a lot of this stuff already flushed out in his own head, I'd say. So we are in for some interesting stuff, I think, going forward, as provided the uh, comic does well. And if that's not enough, because one thing I would love, definitely love to see is some of his, you know, paintings and illustrations he's done in the past, like, brought to life in comic book form. Like, you know, expanded to their own issues or storylines, because those are, there's some good stuff there, I think. And as I was saying, getting out to it, that's not the only thing, though. Because there's actually a QR code in the comic itself that links to a full soundtrack, a full atmospheric instrumental kind of soundtrack for the story itself, for this issue. It's done by another South African artist called Abel. 
who's kind of like an alt rap uh, singer songwriter composer kind of guy and it's just like extra cherry on top this is an already great package because honestly this stuff sounds great in and of itself if you're like a you know tabletop uh, gaming guy a person and you want a good soundtrack you know background music for a, some kind of african adventure kind of uh, module you got going this you could do far worse than this this is some good stuff here that you can use the also of course the um, soundtrack itself is available on able's Bandcamp. so if you want you can just buy that separately if you feel like it too so the link will be in the description along with the links for the comic itself here in conclusion, Shakar, the Eye of the Midnight God by Trevor and Gwenya, definite recommendation from me. If you're a fan of sword and sorcery comics, if you're interested in supporting indie creators, this one's, frankly, it's a no-brainer, right? It's, it's got blades, it's got babes, it's got evil magic, and it's just getting started, so there's no prior background to catch up on, no other issues you have to worry about. You just drop into this one cold and just go for the ride, and I think it's a ride well worth taking, frankly. Uh, I've been Zero Sum. I am very glad to be back. I am very glad to have you back also. You can like, share, subscribe, all that YouTube shit. And I will see you again for more stuff. I've got, God, there's so much stuff I've got to catch up on that I didn't manage to get uh, done during the month I was out. Uh, I will see you again soon. <laughs> Bye.